We are so, so close to deploying our app to the app stores. We've just got one final section in the course here before we do that, where we're gonna tie up a few loose ends. We're gonna add some essential functionality like allowing users to reset their password, change their email, fix a few bugs, that kind of thing. And we're gonna start with this account page. So in this lesson, we're gonna redesign our account page to look like the following, and that's gonna set us up to be able to have these individual screens for updating various aspects of the user's account. So again, just a reminder, you've got this awesome tool here called Mobbin, which you can use to get some inspiration for your account page. At the time of recording, we've also got Stitch by Google that lets you generate mobile designs using AI. And I'll link to some other design resources in the description for this video too. So this is the design that we're gonna replicate here in our app. And I designed this using Mobbin as an inspiration, as a starting point. So that's why I'm recommending that you do the same. So this is our account page currently, and we're gonna go through step by step here as we design this together. So I'm gonna start by designing this first button up here, and we can replicate that design then for our other buttons. And I want you to just notice the structure. Notice here how everything here seems to be in a row layout, being laid out side by side, but we have this internal column layout here as well. So we've got two elements here seemingly side by side in a row layout. So this is important because it means that I'm probably gonna use a group for this rather than a button because a button's just not gonna give me enough flexibility. So I'm going to add here a group with a, another group inside of it. And this first group is in fact going to be a row layout. And my second group here, it's gonna have some text elements in it. So I'm just gonna place those in so we can see what this looks like right away. And we'll just give it a label here. And I'm gonna duplicate this. And this is just going to hold the user's name. So I've got one group over here on the left side of this button. And I'm going to put an icon also within group button, but it's going to be within the row layout here. So I actually want it to be underneath group C as follows. And this can be our trusty carrot right symbol here. I'm gonna set it to be a text color. I'm gonna set it to be sitting in the middle of this group. And then we can probably adjust the design a little bit of this button as well. So I might bump up the font weight for this first part here. And then for the second one, I might even just bump it down a touch in size and then make sure that both of these guys are not having a minimum height, which is just gonna screw up the spacing a little bit here. And then so we can just start to see everything a little bit more clearly, I'm gonna just hide these other existing elements and buttons. I don't wanna delete them entirely because we've got workflows attached to them that I want to maintain for now. But just while we are designing, it's gonna be helpful just to hide them. And let's also set our view here to this standard style that's going to attach this background color that we are also using on our trips view. And then what I think I might do next is actually just duplicate this button a couple of times so I can start to finesse the look here. So our second bit of text here is gonna be change email. And underneath that, I wanna display what the user's current email is. And this one is gonna say change password and then we can just sort of indicate that there is a password to be changed using this symbol. And then I think what I want to do next is put all of these buttons inside of one layout container because this layout container, once I add some padding to it, is going to be the one that I'm going to apply a white background to, right? So we get this kind of look here. And then obviously we need to finesse this a little bit more. Let's call this our group buttons. We might need to add a little bit of gap spacing 
between these elements and also a bit of roundness as well to the group. And then if we look at our reference design here, we've got these little spaces appearing and also our icon here, our arrow icon is just this sort of slight gray. So let's make those changes. So I'll start with my icon here and what I might do is just detach this all together and change the icon style here to this gray 60. And I'm just gonna set this as a new style here for the icon element so that I can just apply that style now to these other icons. And then for this spacer, we can actually just use a shape element for that, which I'm gonna place here within group buttons. So right now this, this shape is sitting in between two of our buttons here. And I'll call it a divider because that's what it is. And we obviously need to adjust the size of this divider. So to make it align, I'm actually just gonna give it a fixed height of one pixel and then turn off the fixed width so that it is in stretch mode. So it's stretching the full width there of the user's view. And then I'll just duplicate it a couple of times and I'll turn off the fixed width as well. So it is now stretching the full width of its parent container. And then I'm just gonna hit Control or Command D on my keyboard to duplicate it. And I'm gonna put the copy in between my other two buttons. So, so far this looks pretty good. I think it's starting to look like our reference design. Let's focus on this log out button now. So to do that, I might actually just duplicate this whole group of buttons. And then within this group that I've copied, if I just select one of the elements that I wanna delete and then hold down shift in the elements tree and select all of the elements that I wanna delete, I'm gonna hit backspace to delete them all so that this is now our button, which is going to say log out. And we probably don't need that extra text either. This can float in the middle vertically. So that's something that I'm gonna to have to set here at its parent layout. So I'll set the container alignment here to be centered. And let's get a little bit of space between our top section of buttons and this bottom logout button. So I'm gonna add here 12 row gap. And the reason why we've actually got like one group of buttons up here and then this separate button down here is just because they have two sort of different categories of things. One is related to the user's details, updating their details, and the other is sort of account-wide actions like logout. Maybe we'll have more actions here or in the top group in the future. But if you look at some established mobile apps, you'll see this kind of design replicated quite often. All right, now we can focus on this section down the bottom. So, let me add a group that's gonna hold our terms and conditions. And let's see, where is this new group that I've added? It's here outside of my group form. So I actually want it to be inside of my group form. And we can call this group terms. I'm gonna make it a row layout and I'm just gonna add a couple of text elements inside. And let's set this first one up. I'm gonna de-emphasize it a little bit relative to everything else because it's not something that a lot of users are often gonna click on, this terms and conditions, but I do want them to know that it is clickable. So I'm gonna make it slightly bold. And as long as it's at least 44 pixels, then we're giving the user a lot of space to click. So that's very good. So let me duplicate this. And this one is gonna be for our privacy policy. And we're gonna set up our terms and conditions and privacy policy and the logic to display them when the user clicks on these elements very shortly in the course. For now, we're just focused on the interface. I want these two elements actually to be centered, but we wanna have a little bit of space between them. So I'll add 16 pixels of column gap there. And then finally, we've got our delete account button down the bottom here. Now, if you recall, we actually already have a delete account button, so that is handy. Let me just put that right underneath our terms. And I'm just gonna change the design of this button slightly. So I'm gonna set the style here to be this link light secondary. So it's basically just a text element right now. And then this button is gonna have 
a slightly de-emphasized design. We obviously don't want to scream out to the user that, hey, click this button, but we obviously still want it to be visible. So to do that, I'm going to make a few subtle changes. I'm going to bump down the font size. I'm going to bump down the font weight. And I'm also going to just bump down the color here. So it's a slight gray color. And I think that looks pretty good. This group and this button, I think, could be a little bit closer together. So I'm just going to hold down Shift to select both of them. And I'm going to right click and put them inside of their own parent column container. So we could call this our group bottom even. And this group bottom doesn't have any gap spacing. So that means that our terms and conditions and privacy policy and this delete account all together, which I think looks quite tidy. Then let's look at the elements that we hid previously on the page. So we've got this text currently logged in. We don't need that anymore because what I'm going to do instead is change the display in this change email to say the current user's email. So the current user's email, which of course we can give ourselves a clue as to how that will look by adding a canvas placeholder. Same thing for the user's name, which is a field that we set up in the last section of the course. Wonderful. We've also got this button log out on the page, but I want to transfer the workflow that is currently on this button so that it's triggered instead by this element here, group logout, which I might just call group button logout. So what we could do is we can enter that workflow and on the trigger event where it says, hey, when this element is tapped, I want you to do these things. We're just gonna change the trigger element to that group that we just set up. And that means that we should be free to delete that old logout button. So if we take a look at our account page, I think that looks pretty tidy. Let's just set up one of these buttons to show a form that lets the user change their personal details. So you can see how that aspect works. And then we're gonna use the same pattern in subsequent lessons to update the user's email and password. So what I'm gonna do is grab a view that's already quite similar to the view that we wanna recreate. So I've got the sign up view. And I'm going to actually right click and clone this mobile view. That does exactly the same thing as if you go into the app manager here, click these three dots and hit duplicate. And I'm gonna change this to update user details. So by duplicating that sign up page, just means that I get to start with a few things that are actually quite useful, namely at least one input here and this group form, which already has the padding settings that I want. So that is quite handy. I might uh, get rid of the overridden back label though. The title here should be update details. And I've got this input. And I've also got here a button at the bottom because this is a not scalable view. So then my sign up button here can instead be my save button. And then we've got some issues that have come from copying this view. We're going to get to those in a moment. Let's just set up the logic to navigate to that view. So when this top group here, which we call group button personal details, when this is clicked, we want to open that new view. So we're going to, as we've done quite a few times now in the course, we're going to use this go to view action. Yes, we're going to open it as a stack because we want the user to be able to easily navigate back. And the view that we're going to here is this update user details. And so that means if I click this top personal details button, then I'm viewing the view in question. And if we go back into that view, I can probably add here a handy little event when the page is loaded to set focus to that input. That's just going to mean that when we view that view, then automatically here, this input is focused. We should probably add a little bit of padding underneath this button. So I'm going to do that by adding 16 pixels of margin to the bottom of the button here. That just gives a little bit of space there above the keyboard. 
And then for the logic when this button is clicked, let's have a look at the workflow that we copied across. Obviously, we're not signing the user up anymore. What we probably want to do instead is make changes to the current user, right? So we can use this action here and we're gonna be updating here their name field. So we'll set this to be whatever the value is that they have in that name input. And then instead of going to a separate tab here, we should just navigate them back to the account tab. We can actually just do that by going to the previous mobile view. So if I change my name here to Patrick, hit save, then you see that my name is updated and I'm back on this account view. All right, so we've got the foundations of our account view. In the next lesson, let's set up the ability for the user to change their email and their password.